Orderly rows of attached three to four story housing line the blocks of dense residential neighborhoods. These structures often run the entire block and are frequently located on narrow streets. The design of a row house can vary from city to city. Row house construction is unique and presents a variety of tactical considerations that must be utilized to prevent serious injury or death to firefighters. Even though they're the most common fires that we fight in this department, they are the most dangerous fires we fight. Fire spreads quickly, it's unpredictable. You have to deploy units to cover multiple areas in the building to ensure that the fire doesn't extend, the fire doesn't overwhelm and trap other firefighters operating the building because in any given situation, you have firefighters operating on multiple levels in the building, all doing different jobs. And if you don't deploy them correctly and everyone doesn't do what they're supposed to do, things can go bad really quickly. Engine 10, truck 13, box. Company 10 is responding. Challenges and tactics for fighting row house fires. This video will explain how pre incident planning and the use of six proven tactics can reduce the risk of injuries and deaths. Being the deputy fire chief of training, the one thing that we've done over the last year and a half is really push hard on our members learning building construction and fire behavior as well. Uh, specifically in row houses, the big thing that we encounter in our city is just the varying setups or layouts of the row homes and then the construction types. Row houses usually have three to four stories in the front and four to five stories in the rear. Many have been renovated. Others remain vacant and in disrepair. The typical row house exterior includes narrow windows, a front stoop, second and third floor bay windows, and some have a sloping roof. The inside of row houses often include narrow, straight-run, steep stairs, long, narrow hallways, and walk-out basements, cellars, or both. Below-grade rooms can contain utilities such as gas and electric. These rooms can also be used for storage and in many cases may not be accessible from the first floor. It is not uncommon for multiple people to occupy a row house. Several family members may reside in the building or a family may occupy a single floor. Single room occupancy may also involve people living in the basement with exterior access to upper floors such as steps sealed off. Most of our city has ordinary constructed 100 plus year old row homes, but the outlying areas of our city and then some areas that have been revitalized contain lightweight row home construction. So we've made a concerted effort to continuously push that out in our training. The big thing is, is understanding the coordination of attack. Understanding the unique features of row houses in your jurisdiction is critical to reducing the risk of a firefighter dying or becoming seriously injured. Community risk assessment does include pre-incident planning. Doing a community assessment is very important when we're talking about row house fires and fires in general. On runs outside of those fires, we're paying attention to the community that we're running. So if it's a younger neighborhood, we know that there may be kids and that's a priority. If it's an older neighborhood, we know that the building construction may be somewhat original or the wiring may be original and the people may not be as mobile. So getting out and seeing what we're dealing with every day and interacting with the community really gives us a good grip on a community assessment as well as building construction in the process. The first resource on scene should conduct a 360 degree size up and risk assessment. If the 360 degree size up can't be completed, it needs to be communicated to get resources to Side Charlie. The size up and risk assessment helps determine the number of stories, identify life safety issues, the location of the fire, the presence of a basement, the type of construction, and access points on Side Alpha and Side Charlie. The following tactics can keep you safe while fighting a row house fire. These tactics are not prioritized and may happen at the same time during fire ground operations. If the fire is in a middle unit, resources, including a rapid intervention crew, 
should be deployed to side Charlie for size up and risk assessment. If the fire is in the basement or first floor, consider fire extension to the upper floors. If the fire is in an end unit, you can quickly size up the unit and deploy resources without having to go through another interior unit. As you size up the row house, be sure to consider renovations that have been made, remain aware of the floor plan and the structure, and the fire location to deploy hose lines effectively. Avoid the exhaust portion of the fire's flow path, and avoid areas of the row house prone to structural collapse. Fight the fire on the level of the fire. An exterior attack may be the most effective initially. Control the fire with a charged hose line to protect the firefighters conducting the search. For a basement fire where access is limited, flow water through a window or other opening. For a basement fire where there is full access, flow water through the doorway. If the structure is sound, make entry and finish extinguishing the fire. Access side Charlie through an alley or adjoining row house. Be sure the backup hose line is stretched and charged. When below grade areas cannot be reached due to high heat conditions or potential for floor collapse, use a wide fog cellar nozzle or piercing nozzle to control the fire. Piercing nozzles or cockloft nozzles should be used for flowing water into void spaces or attics. During a ventilated situation, tactical ventilation should only be conducted when effective water has been applied to the fire. Consider horizontal and vertical ventilation options. Uncoordinated ventilation can result in creating a flow path and fire growth. In conjunction with the incident's tactical objectives, also send resources to protect inside exposures Bravo 1 and Delta 1. To check for extensions, send resources and charged hose line to floors above, including attic or cockloft. Level floors or open spaces can allow fire to spread horizontally across the row house. Position ground ladders to all upper floors and roof using caution around utility wires. Avoid resting ladders on possibly compromised porch roofs or window awnings. Myself, my company, we run a lot of row homes, so we do a lot of practice to perform a, a offensive attack to extinguish any fire, whether it be in a basement of a row home, the attic, cock loft, or the second floor bedroom. But we're here to do a job effectively and efficiently so we make the best of it every chance we get. Firefighting operations for row houses must consider a number of factors. Safe and successful row house firefighting employs the tactics explained in this video. The information provided in this video is intended to help firefighters operate safely and make sure everyone goes home.